model steam engines and boilers, part 39. Making the cylinder supports, take two, an alternative method. Once the main video starts, you will be watching heavily edited extracts from my series How to Build a Model Steam Engine. These video clips were edited from the series where I cover making the cylinder supports for the second time, because I made a mess of the first one and I wasn't happy with it. This series, called How to Build a Model Steam Engine, is for my Patreon supporters only. The full-length versions of the episodes in the series contain a lot more information than you're about to see, but this is sufficient to give you a good idea how to do the job. There are some other benefits of being a patron of my channel. You get to download my e-book, The Essential Guide to Miniature Steam, which is completely free, and you can watch the entire series of How to Build a Model Steam Launch, which is over five hours of instructions. I would like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I could not make these videos without your kind help and support. All of the edited clips you're about to see are taken from part 24 of the series. In the previous episode I wanted to show the simplest method of making one of these brackets, which was to drill a lot of holes, break out the centre and file it to size. Then I used a small drum sander to get a good finish on the inside radius. On this first bracket that I made, everything was going well until right at the end I rounded a part I shouldn't have rounded. The outside edges of the mounting lugs. I couldn't live with this so I'm scrapping this part and I'm going to make another one. Actually I'm making two, but for the purpose of the video I'm just going to show the manufacture of one. Apart from the accidentally rounded edges, this bracket was fine, so I've coated the new piece of steel angle that I bought with marking out blue. I need to make two of these, so I'll take this opportunity to chop up some steel. For this I'm using my old bandsaw, and in no time at all I have another blank which I will use to make the second cylinder mounting bracket. Note the steel bolt at the back of the vise on the bandsaw. This is just for packing to allow me to clamp the angle using the swivelling jaw of the vise. This angle is the same size as what was supplied with the casting set, but is slightly better quality and doesn't have rounded edges. And now I have three pieces of steel angle to make the brackets from. I only need two of them, but I'm taking no chances if I foul up again. This is a half inch diameter R8 collet for my milling machine, and I'm fitting this special cutter. Why use a special cutter? Well, it just happens to be one inch in diameter. I think this is a dovetail cutter used for cutting slots in milling tables if you're making your own. But thankfully, I'm not having to do that. As I do not own a one inch diameter end mill, this will be sufficient to machine the pieces of angle. Although in this video, as I mentioned earlier, I'm only going to be making one of them. This video just covers the machining of the basic shape. Here I'm firmly clamping the piece of angle in the machine vise. Note the packing underneath. This is to stop the milling cutter from damaging the jaws of the machine vise. Finding the centre of the piece of steel angle is surprisingly easy. All I had to do was line up one of the teeth on the cutter with the felt tip pen mark on the steel angle. I really should be using lubricant on this job. I did try it, but it smoked horrendously. So for the purposes of the video, I'm risking my cutter in an attempt to show you how it's done quite clearly. Please note that I'm not taking very deep cuts. And now, just like it shows on the drawing, I have a half inch radius in the piece of steel angle, which I am now cleaning up with the aid of a needle file. On the left is the bracket I made in the last video, and on the right is the embryo bracket that I'm going to machine a bit more. And as you can see, I've drawn around the mounting lugs on the underside of the bracket. This is another of my R8 collets, and this is to take a quarter of an inch diameter cutter. For this job, I should use a slot drill, which has two cutting teeth. But instead, I'm using a quarter of an inch diameter end mill, which is less brutal. In this clip, I'm just milling a slot in the piece of angle. And please note that at either end, I'm not going all the way to the lines. I will only mill up to the marked lines once I've taken out the center of this piece of metal. There are different ways I could have done this. I suppose I could have used my bandsaw. But instead, I'm using a milling cutter just to show alternative ways of doing things. Usual health and safety warning, you must wear eye protection when doing jobs like this. After I removed the center of the piece of steel angle, I very carefully followed the line all the way around the edges. 
This is a critical part of the job and it's very easy to go wrong. A recommendation is to take a very fine cut, then just in case you do go wrong, the resultant error will not be too bad. Once the job had been finished, I removed it from the milling machine and cleaned up the sharp edges using a needle file. In this clip, I'm holding the part onto the bed. I'm using a scriber to mark underneath it, so when I start to clean it up on the one inch belt sander, I will know just how far to go. A quick check and comparison with the original bracket that I made in the last episode is quite favourable. Now I need to cut the blank to the same profile as this one, and this time I will be extra specially careful not to make a mess of the job on the final operation. This is where the job went wrong in the last episode. The angle was too shallow and the bandsaw blade cut into the bottom part. And it was when I tried to put this problem right that I realised that the bracket didn't look good at all. And no matter how many times I told myself, well, it'll be OK, it's only a cylinder bracket, well, the worse it got. Thankfully, the job didn't go wrong this time. It's not bad at all. The two lugs are a very good fit on the bed and the milled one-inch radius looks good. And once it's profiled, it should look like the first one, as you can see here. But that's in the next episode. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.